Welcome to Still Growing in Grace, a program dedicated to inspiring joy, giving hope, and delighting in grace. I'm Mike Zenker, and I'll be sharing with you a message of hope that will expand your understanding of God's love and amazing grace. God already deeply loves you, totally accepts you, and really, really likes you. Growing in Grace Ministries Canada and Hope Fellowship, your community church, invites you to enjoy today's program as we dig deeper into what it means to be still growing in grace. Good morning and welcome to Still Growing in Grace. Today I have a special guest that uh, I think you're going to enjoy hearing. Um, I met Logan uh, a little while back and I heard him speak on another podcast called Rethinking God with Tacos. A great, great podcast. I love that one. Great guests, great hosts. Um, but Logan, a younger person who is uh, actually journeying and experiencing a better perspective on God's love and who God is, even with a uh, pretty unique background. And that's why I'm sharing this story. I think you're going to really, really enjoy this. So let's dig in and uh, enjoy this conversation. It's for your encouragement. And it's really cool. For me, it's really cool to see other people still coming to a revelation of good news. Uh, sometimes in, in the faith circle, so to speak, or as you're walking and journeying in grace, it's, you don't meet a lot of people that have come to a, a wake-up call of who God is almost out of nothing. Um, but there are a lot of stories like that. And it gives me much hope to realize, hey, God's at work, even if it's not through a traditional lens, like even like this, this kind of a podcast. Does God use that kind of stuff? Sure, but it's definitely not the only way. And to be connected to more and more people... Uh, who are learning differently. I love it. So this this is going to be a great conversation. I hope you'll enjoy it. So let's dig right in. Here we go. Oh. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Still Growing in Grace. I've got Logan with me. And uh, this is a delight. I, uh, Logan, I first heard you on Rethinking God with Tacos. So that's when I was first uh, introduced to you and then got to see a bunch of your other stuff. And um, a number of folks that I know uh, really resonated with what you were sharing. So uh, I'm glad you're willing to come on and uh, I'd like to hear your story. Tell us where you're from, a uh, bit of your testimony, so to speak, and then maybe we'll just banter through and and get to know you somewhat because um, uh, we don't know each other at all. So this is like a cold turkey hello call. We've never yeah. chatted before, so this is fun. But we have too many mutual friends. I, I, I saw that, so that's fun. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me on. I've been looking forward to it. And uh, I think I saw you on, were you on Catherine Toon's yeah. uh, podcast? Yeah, yeah. many times. <laughs> that was that was one of the first times that I, uh, I saw you online. Yeah. And uh, I was on her show probably, I think it was back in April or something. But yep. anyways, I'm glad we were able to make this happen. I know we've been kind of talking about it for a few months, going back and forth on trying to find a good time and, and date and we're here. So know, um, yep. it's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, I, I live in new Orleans, Louisiana. Oh. Yeah. So, so I'm actually, one of the, one of the guys we just interviewed, uh, Randy Esclot, uh, I think that's how you say his last name. He lives there too. Really? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm actually, I'm not, I'm 20 minutes north of new Orleans. So since uh, I'm in Canada, you're, you're really close to the other guy. Yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> So perspective, I, right? You wouldn't know you wouldn't know Mandeville, Louisiana. So that's New Orleans is is really uh what I tell people. But uh okay. yeah, I've I've been in this area my entire life. And so my story is I was born and raised Catholic, which that's okay. the predominant uh denomination around here is Catholicism. Really? Yes. Very, I would have thought, I would have, I would have thought Louisiana would have more of a Southern Baptist kind of kind of a uh, heavy presence, but no, it does. It does being in the Bible belt, but this area in particular, New Orleans has a very rich, deep culture of <laughs> Catholicism. So yeah, that's this, this, this area where I'm located is, is predominantly Catholic. Wow. And so I've got all my family on both sides are all Catholic, uh, devote practicing devout practicing catholics um i went to a catholic school i uh, went to mass every sunday and when i was around 11 my parents left the catholic church 
and became evangelical. So I, I started going to a uh, non-denominational church and a, and a non-Catholic Christian private school. And that was when I really developed a passion for the Bible. Hmm. And as a, I guess I was 11, 12 years old, I started reading the Bible like three or four hours a day. After you're, you're was, one of those weird kids. I was, I was, the, <laughs> but, but I wasn't, I wasn't weird at, at my school because I was oh. surrounded with Christian kids who were basically all in that same community of, of we go to church every Sunday, yep. our families are, you know, going to church like that. That was just the community I was brought up in. So um, I was very sheltered growing up uh, to say the least, but anyways, I, yeah, I developed a passion early on for just theology and religion and studying the Bible. And when I was in junior high, going into high school, I was like on track. I said, I, I want to be a pastor when I grow up, you know, I want to go into ministry full time. What were you thinking? I know, I know. <laughs> But honestly, even even when I was a Catholic, uh, just I don't know. It's always fascinated me since I was just as far back as I can remember, like the deep existential questions of life, uh, the afterlife, heaven, hell. I've just always been really intrigued with those things. And I've always I've, I'm someone who is I love silence. I love being by myself. And so I guess I developed a unique prayer life early on. Mm. Um, and it just, yeah, my, my relationship with God has been very intimate from as far back as I can remember. Wow. So I don't have, I don't have that crazy. I don't have the testimony of, Oh, I was out, you know, living in the world, running from God. And then I had this thing that happened and yeah. it was, a I didn't have a, a, a road to Damascus experience or anything like that. So um, I was, again, I was sheltered. I was brought up in this and I really didn't know anything outside of my little Christian home. And that was, and you know, when I tell people that story, they're like, oh, you know, look at you, you little self-righteous. Like that's, you know, but at the same time, it's like, it, that actually came back to, to really, uh, negatively, affect me as I was in high school and as I was going into college. How so? How so? Cause that that's odd. Yeah. Because, um, my religious fundamentalism began to really prohibit me or prevent me, I guess, from experiencing God in a genuine way. So it became super inauthentic. It became super intellectual and theological. And I was always trying to debate everybody and prove wow. that, my theology, my perspectives were the one and only way. And all these other denominations and all these other ways of thinking under the Christian umbrella were wrong. Wow. So, so have you, has that, do you look back and kind of go, Oh my goodness, what was I thinking? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. But I, you know, again, at that time, this was mainly when I was in high school. So, okay. so um, during this time, I kind of lost my relationship with God, so to speak, in the sense of I wasn't going to God just to spend time with God and to get to know God. It was it, it turned into strictly like I wanted to be a theologian. I wanted to be a pastor. I wanted to I wanted to do full time ministry. And so, um, yeah, it became all head knowledge. It became all it really was a pride thing. So mm -hmm. um by the time I was a senior, I had made a decision of, hey, I'm going to take a year off out of high school to really, I was going to uh, pray and fast for a year in order for God to tell me where to go to college. Wow. And so I did that. And at this point, I'm super, super charismatic. I'm super, um, the movement, the little uh, group I was in at that time was very legalistic. So we were praying and fasting and praying in tongues and going out and doing street evangelism like every weekend before and after church. And uh, I wanted to be, I don't know if you're familiar with Todd White. 
Yep. But I wanted to be Todd White. So I was going around like praying for everybody in public. I had a book of all my little testimonies of my healings and the, the people that I uh, prayed for and, and uh, just became obsessed with that whole world. And during that time, I felt like God spoke to me and told me to intern at this local church to go through a pastoral internship. And then through this pastoral internship, I would get my credits through Oral Roberts because Oral Roberts had partnered with this internship at the church. And so I enrolled at Oral Roberts full-time online and um, that was 2019. And so when COVID came into the next year, the internship, um, I, I guess it stopped. And so I was just completely online and I never went back to the internship. So I ended up finish finishing at Oral Roberts in like three years because I took, I think I took 20 hours a semester or something like that. I was really trying to speed up the process of graduating and I ended up graduating. Um, I got my bachelor's in theology, but freshman year. So really going into this internship. I started to question a lot of the things that I was raised with in the evangelical community, um, really like the core tenets of the faith. And I didn't tell anybody, but just kind of to myself, I started studying these different ideas and these different beliefs. And I think I uh, there were a few grace people that I heard of. And so I started listening to them and reading their books I don't know if you know Paul White. Yep. Not Paula White, but Paul nope. White. Yep, absolutely. Um, Paul White has. Because yeah, I was going to ask you, well, who were some of those early on influencers? Because sometimes God brings certain influencers into our lives at a certain time, then others for another stage. Who knows? And some stay the whole time, but that'd be curious yeah. to know. But Paul White, I do know. Yeah, so so Paul White was one of them. He was really the first one. And then okay. John Shinsby was the second one. Okay. Um, and then of course I I watched The Shack, which just melted my heart and yeah. made me rethink everything. And yeah. so um, yeah, Paul Young had a major influence on my season of I don't really like to call it deconstruction, but I know we it's a term we gotta use, but it it's a it's not the right term, I don't think. Yeah, I think he- healthy deconstruction with reconstruction, because I wasn't yeah. trying to like deconstruct my faith. I was just trying to rethink and s- see things from a different perspective. Yeah. Isn't that called discipleship? Like just growing like naturally? Like it doesn't need a title. <laughs> yeah, right, right. That we're so obsessed with titles and I know. names and labels and categories, but yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah, him and a few others really got me thinking, and and it's amazing because like I had no idea that there were different ways to view these topics in the in the faith, and I had no idea that the church had centuries of like not really knowing which way was the right way to view it. And they had discussions and and arguments and debates and they wrestled with things because like the, the, what I came from was strict dogmatism. Here are the doctrines. Here's the dogma. This is what you believe. Don't ask any questions. And so I just thought, Hey, whatever I'm being fed, whatever they're telling me, this is what the church has believed Mm -hmm. from the first century, but that, that wasn't true at all. And so what I realized at the end of this little time, the season of rethinking these these different doctrines and ideas was that my new beliefs were a lot more orthodox and traditional. So they weren't new. They were new to you. They were new to me, but they were by no means new to (laughs) the, the church and uh that was really, really fascinating. When I studied, when I started doing the, um, and this was in college too, I did like an in-depth church history study and yeah, like reading, um, the early church fathers, Gregory of Nyssa, Clement of Alexandria, Origen, Athanasius, um, 
Athanasius, of course, you know, all these, all these guys. And, and uh, it was weird because what they were writing about and what they were saying was new to me in a sense of theologically, it was new, Mm -hmm. but it resonated with me so deeply. So it felt like I had always known this stuff. It Mm -hmm. just hard to explain. I get it. I'm excited to hear this. As you're saying that, I'm thinking, yes, yes. Because I, as I come across some of those things, it's like, I knew that was true. I knew it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I didn't have a framework or words for it. <laughs> yeah. So so uh, one of the, one of the uh, Christian mystics that I really started to, modern day Christian mystics that I started to read was uh, Richard Rohr. Oh, my goodness. And Richard Rohr yeah. says he Richard Rohr is always talking about like the difference between um intellectual knowledge and experiential knowledge. Ooh, right? that would have hit you, wouldn't it? Oh yeah. So so through the the mystical journey, the revelations that we get and these these teachings that we come across, we find that they're beyond the intellect and they they resonate with us in such an experiential way and so that's kind of what happened and so um towards the end uh maybe senior year i guess is of college at oral roberts was when i started reading the christian mystics um thomas merton Mm -hmm. uh uh, saint Teresa of avila saint john of the cross meister eckhart and this was like, okay, you're telling me that God is actually within me and that I can experience and access God at will by going within. Because at that point, I believed that God was somewhere out there up in the sky. And that if I prayed hard enough, or if I fasted, or if I read my Bible long enough, then the spirit would just appear and, and come, into, come into my room. And then I could have some kind of encounter. <laughs> That's how I was programmed. And so this whole idea that the that God was, number one, a mystery, which is what the early church teaches, three in one Trinity, like that doesn't make sense in the intellectual mind. Yeah. But when you experience that flow, that dance, that uh, perichoresis. Yeah, it's like, whoa, this is this is beyond anything I could think, ask or imagine. And you you experience it from within. What happens is that you are transformed from the inside out. Yeah, and that's the power of uh, of experiencing the divine presence is that it transforms you. And so um, I ended up writing my senior paper on, and I know I'm kind of going all over the place, but no, I was great. Thirty five page senior paper as a refute against the doctrine of eternal conscious torment. Wow. At Oral Roberts. They must have loved you. Believe it or not, believe it or not, my professor, I got a name on the paper, but my pr- professor, although he he disagreed, um, was very respectful and was applauded me for my research and wow. for the paper overall. So after I wrote that paper, that sparked an interest in writing. And so I started writing little blogs here and there and poetry. And then I wrote my first book. Really? In you. Yeah. What's yeah. it called? Sorry. And I didn't hear that. The mystery in you. Mystery. Okay. I did hear about, okay. I guess I did. Okay. Yeah. So the mystery in you discovering God in the deepest part of your being. Hmm. That's the whole premise of the book is going within. And I talk about a lot of different things, but, um, that was the the big revelation for me in that year of my life. And then I started uh, writing some more and I started teaching and I've, I've been making videos on YouTube and I am starting a spiritual life coaching business. And so now, you know, I went through a whole journey of r- realizing and discovering that God is within me, which was huge. And for a lot of people, you know, Christ knew the hope of, of glory is this revelation that just changes their lives because they've been so used to praying and looking up there and expecting God to presence to be here sometimes and not. And so that that's the starting point. That's foundational. You know, I think of like when Paul wrote about his uh, Damascus experience, um, 
he says that God was pleased to reveal his son within me. Within. That's, a, that's the starting point. But I got to a point after a year of really teaching this and talking about it in the book, I got to the point to where I was like, okay, this is boring now. Like I get it. God's in me. Great. Cool. Okay. Now what? And so now what I'm really interested in is teaching people how to actually experience mm-hmm. God within them. It's one thing to talk mm-hmm. about it and go the theology and pull out all the verses that talk about how God is within us, Christ is in me. But what does that mean? And so the mystics really uh, give us a uh, um, a way of experiencing God and not just knowing God through the the Bible or through doctrines and dogmas and all that. and so, Or intellect, as you called it, right? It's just yeah, intellectual intellect. ascent. Correct. So that's that's what I feel like my my purpose here on this earth is to teach people how to first and foremost experience God within themselves so that they can begin to see the divine presence in everyone and everything in the ordinary, mundane, common aspects of life. Um, because once you get once you get to that place, then as I say, the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven goes from being a intellectual concept to a direct transformative experience. Mm-hmm. So, wow. That's that's what I love. That's what I love to talk about. I'm I am overjoyed as I'm hearing this and I'm biting my tongue because as you're saying all this, it's like you are almost word for word describing my awakening 25 years ago. The exact wow. same thing of Christ in you, what I'm already forgiven, what he's in me. Cause I was taught, you know, when, when I'm good, God's with me. When I'm bad, he has to leave me cause he can't handle sin. So if I go into a bar, he has to wait outside. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so it's the near far Grover thing of God being with you. It's ridiculous. So that, that awakening changed my life, but I found that I had a lot of baggage that had to be unpacked and cleaned up. And it sounds like you didn't have quite as much. And uh, I'm to me, it's a delight to hear that because uh, unfortunately, and people have said, man, you got a lot of baggage, Mike. So, well, I may have baggage, but I'm, it doesn't own me anymore. I just know there's a lot of other people that are just like me who are still struggling with unpacking these doctrines that they've been taught and don't even know their, their, their foundations are on false concepts of who God is. They don't even know it. They've never been challenged. So, uh, I'm excited to hear what you're planning to do. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah. No, it is. Go ahead. So what's your what's your next step? What are you hoping to do now? Because I've I've seen a bunch of your videos. I think I think you're hitting topics that are really important. Again, I chuckle. I'm thinking, wow, that stuff's still exciting. 25 years later, you know, and and yeah. some of them are kind of new to me in the last uh, five to seven years. Those are like even the hell one was a big unpacking the end times was about 2013. Well, that's 10 years ago now. 2013 was the first time I unpacked end times. I knew there was something better. I knew there was a more hope-filled perspective, but I didn't have access to it. And then it came to me. And so I've been learning and unlearning. And then that led to hell. And that's leading to a whole bunch of other pillars and topics that I got to unpack. And as a pastor, uh, there's other people with me. They're, they're also unpacking, you know, and they need a safe place to do that. Sure. Uh, and, and I got to tell you that I appreciate your demeanor, your tone and with, with which you do your teaching and your videos, because it's, it's not about a, it's funny. You say you're part of the charismatic uh, world. It's like your personality doesn't seem to fit that. <laughs> how does that work for you? How, how'd you put up with that? You know, where I should have been a Pentecostal crazy charismatic because my personality is a little bit different, but, but still the same gentle Christ in you. Right. And the yeah. fruit of that is the light shines out of you. And I've caught that from you. I've really valued that. So thank you. Wow. So what's, what's been, um, uh, I asked you first, uh, what, what are you hoping to do now? I think you just mentioned this, uh, um, helping people to come out and of their, no, that was the wrong word. Um, go ahead. You, you tell me what it is. Yeah. So, yeah, I would say again, after, 
teaching and and really focusing on this this idea it's not a new revelation it's been around forever but for a lot of us it's new which is that yeah. christ in you yep. after teaching that for really i guess almost two years now um i've gotten to a point now to where it's time to start teaching people how to practically experience that in their everyday lives, because that's where the power and the transformation comes in. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I think the two um, methods or modalities for that is meditation and contemplative mm -hmm. prayer. Okay. That's but why I you like, that's why you like Richard Rohr. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because uh, Richard Rohr does a great job of of explaining what contemplation really is, and I think he does a great job of talking about the the science and the theology behind God being within us. But then he takes it a step further, and the reason why people love Richard Rohr so much is because he comes along and he says, "You don't you." Experiencing God is not limited to church on Sunday. Yeah. Of course, you can you can experience God in a church, in a service, in a mass. Of course, but you can also experience God when you're with your family at Bingo. a mm -hmm. together. At you can experience God when you're on the beach watching a sunset, or when you're just going about your your everyday stuff that you do every day in your life like god is in all things right all things are in god and god is in all things and so that's uh i think that's what people are really longing for is to is to experience god in their everyday lives and we what can do, talk about that. go ahead what are you seeing in your uh culture of the hindrances to receiving this kind of truth, because you just made a huge leap for somebody just in the normal church world, evangelical world. You've just said some would Oh no, that sounds too new agey. Right. So yeah. what, what are, what are maybe some hindrances that people that are blocking people or they don't even know it's stopping them from entering into this experience. Do you have, have you come across anything uh, like that? Yeah, I would say for me and for my own life, it, it was my, previous tradition my religious mm. fundamentalism and i don't say that I, I don't want to speak uh negatively about my religion that i was in because the way i see it is is this um something that serves you that aided you that helped you in a season which it did that was a part of my journey can eventually become the very thing that hinders you from your spiritual growth and development. Mm -hmm. So there comes a time where the bird has to leave the nest. Yeah. I, and, I, I've seen and caught the attitudes of many folks, unfortunately, in this deconstruction world, if you want to use that term, who really get venomous about their past and their, their nominations and their, whatever they're angry at. And it's like, whoa, you got some healing to do first before you, you start teaching or, or, uh, you know, de tackling all this, because if, if Christ is in all things, he's in that too. So, you know, wow. you gotta be careful. That's what it reveals. Like you said, there's definitely, you know, most of the time when people walk out of their previous tradition is because of some kind of hurt, some kind mm -hmm. of trauma, um, some kind of suffering. And so there has to be a season of healing and just a season of uh, really, I guess, going within and, and figuring out, um, figuring out where God wants you in, in this next season of your life. Um, it, it, because you're right, if that doesn't happen, then people tend to uh, get really angry and then they create ministries where that's oh my like gosh yeah is just condemning and putting down these other uh traditions and denominations and these different yeah. theologies and you know it's like what what fruit is that producing and so i've yeah. i've actually like i've been guilty of that like early on when i came out of 
my previous tradition. Yeah. That's all I wanted to do was deconstruct and point out where <laughs> they're and where they're just completely missing the grace of God. Yeah. And then, you know, I've I've done that, but like I was saying, what I've learned is that something that served me well in a season, which it did mm-hmm. for a number of purposes, um, can eventually be the thing that hinders me. And so yeah. the bird has to leave the nest, but the nest is comfortable. It's familiar. I've always been in this nest. It's all I know. So it can be hard to leave the nest, but you have to. And once you do, then you enter into a world that's bigger, better, and beyond anything you could think, dream, or imagine. Another yeah. analogy is like the whole, you got to leave the aquarium <laughs> to step into the ocean of grace, right? Like yeah. that's the... And, and, uh, so, so I think for so many people, what prevents them from getting into that place is just where they're at and they are comfortable with what's always been known, what's always been familiar. And there's just a, uh, for whatever reason, they just don't want to leave the nest. Um, I, I think what you're offering and how you're doing your videos now you're giving folks that are tire kicking this journey, wanting to experience God deeper. You're you along and there's the the choir of voices is growing. That's it. I'm seeing that more and more. And you're one of them. But it's giving people permission to ask the questions in a safer place when our old tradition, there is no safe place to ask some of those questions. So to know that there are others actually asking the same questions, that there is a more hope-filled perspective is very exciting, right? So I, I yeah. appreciate that about you. So that's been cool. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Asking questions and just being open-minded. And the other thing too is like where I am on my journey right now is I'm at a place where I know what I believe deep in my heart because of my experience. And I hold that uh, to be very serious to me, but at the same time, I want to remain humble and I want to remain teachable. And I never want to get to a place to where I think I have everything figured out. Don't forget that. Do not forget that. (laughs) There's that sweet spot between not being too overly confident and there's and the other the other extreme is just uh you know deconstructing everything and just pretty much not having any fundamental beliefs about anything yeah. that's the other extreme to that but there's a sweet spot in the middle where you never fully land the plane yeah kind of hover and you just stay open and you recognize that um meister eckhart said uh, every creature is a word of God. Mm. And so you, so everything becomes your teacher in this spiritual journey. And uh, you'd be amazed at, at, at how and where and by who you can learn things from every day. Yeah. And so that's kind of where that's where I've been, but that's the second thing that really hinders people is just their closed minded, um, and they're so set on their doctrines and their rules and their dogmas mm-hmm. that they can't see past that. And um, that's it, and no intellectual argument is going to win and convince them. It's got to be the spirit of Christ in them who reveals himself. That's it. It's not our job to convince people. Right. Right. And I won't even engage in a discussion yeah. with someone who I can sense is closed minded, who's just trying to prove me wrong. Yeah. You see that, like on my Facebook, I get people that comment stuff all the time where they're asking a question, but they're not. Yeah. They're trying to tell me that I am wrong and they are right. And I don't play that game because there's really no game to play. It's, yeah. You're, like you said, you're not going to change their mind. So now if someone approaches me and they're genuinely wanting to learn why I believe the way I believe, even if they disagree with me, if yeah. they're just genuinely interested in, in how I've come to these conclusions, then then I'll call you and we can talk about it all day. Yeah. Uh, 
but it goes back to the heart. If I sense that the heart is closed off and it's just, I'm trying to, to disprove you and I'm trying to uh, call you out as a heretic. I, I, I don't, I don't go there. I don't, I won't even answer it. Wow. That's good. And that, and that's wise. Um, I like that teachability part because not everybody is teachable. Some people think they've arrived, but even this program that I'm sharing this on, I call it still growing in grace. After all, no one's arrived. Uh, right. and we, we just got to keep our hand open and let God put in what has to go in, take out what has to come out. And it, honestly, if I were to sum it all up, I'd say, what I am learning now is making me love God more and love everyone else around me more. Like that's the fruit of what's been happening and it's bizarre and it's beautiful. So I, I hear that in you too. Now I hear that, that love for everyone and doesn't matter what background you have, there is more to be experienced in God that you may not have been told about. Yeah. Once you have a authentic encounter and experience with God within yourself. Yeah. You recognize that that same presence is within everyone else. Yeah. That's a big journey. And well, you can't not see it. It's, well, once you, once you see it, you can't unsee it. Exactly. Yeah. That's really cool. I'm looking at the clock and we're, we're fresh out of time. Um, I want to say thank you for taking time just to chat and uh, hear a bit of your story. It really is cool to to see some similarities and uh, where you're at. And you have a, a group of people you're going to reach. It. I can't because I'm too old. You know, it's just really funny. Um, but your message is filled with great joy and light. And I'm I'm delighted to get to know you and looking forward to your future too. Thank you. Well, I greatly appreciate it. It's been fun, and I love having these conversations because. Honestly, I don't have enough friends to have these conversations oh. with. So, uh, but that has changed in this season. God is bringing yep. new people into my life, people that are like-minded, that are on the same path. And um, it's been awesome. It really has been. So. That's cool. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. We'll look forward to our next conversation, whenever that will be. Yes, sir. Okay, Mike. All right. See ya. All right. I hope you enjoyed that conversation. That was really, really good. And thank you for the comments. Buddy Fisher from uh, Louisiana uh, was texting a lot in the uh, YouTube channel because we're streaming this to, I think, four different Facebook pages, to um, Twitch, to uh, YouTube and stuff like that. So we have different locations this is all going out to. Um, but Buddy was saying this is, you know, he spent 50 years of his life in religion. So to untangle from that, it's a big deal. And, you know, the gift that Logan brings, he's, he's a lot younger and has untangled. Um, there isn't a competition for the timing, right? And wherever you are at now is likely the time that the Holy Spirit made you, made it possible for you to actually be teachable, and so there is no race to to suddenly get it all. In fact, it, the, the harder you try to get it, the the longer it takes. I think you just gotta loosen the grip of uh, trying to understand this this who is God in you and uh, what do I have to unlearn because that can be distracting as well. Uh, anyway, I uh, I hope you enjoyed that. I uh, I look forward to another conversation with him. He is going to likely be part of the forgiveness conference that we're going to do in April. You'll hear more about that soon, uh, but he'll be one of the contributors and uh, looking forward to that. All right, until next week, have a fantastic day. Share this video with others who uh, could use the encouragement. I uh, love this testimony. I love this conversation with Logan. Have a great week, and we'll catch you all later. Oh, Joy. Hey, Joy. Good to see you there. Randy, yep. Thanks for saying hi. Um, yeah. Yeah, you're right, buddy. He's such a calm presence. <laughs> I love it. That was so awesome. All right, we'll catch you all later. Thank you so much. See ya. Join me next time on Still Growing in Grace for more good news. Enjoy previous episodes by downloading our podcast at growingingrace.ca. You can also visit hopefellowshipycc.com to find our service times and location. If this show has been an encouragement to you, please consider making a donation today at growingingrace.ca and help us keep spreading this good news. Thank you again for tuning in to Still Growing in Grace.